Welcome to Press Start this week, folks. Uh, my name is Howard. I'm Andrew. And we're here today talking with someone you may or may not know by face, Mr. Steven T Toulouse. Yes. Uh, better known as Steptoe, actually. Uh, yeah, I only get called Steven if I'm at home and I've done something wrong. Yeah. So Typically, that's the rule. They like putting all three names on them. <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah, exactly. For those of you who don't know, uh, Steptoe is Director of Policy and Enforcement at Xbox Live, correct? Yes, yes I am. And you've been there for how long now? Uh, I began uh, in that role in, um, it was midsummer of 2007. That's so a, coming up a couple on, of years. Uh, golly, yeah, coming yeah. on up in four years. Wow. Okay, so that's probably the role you're a little bit more familiar with, but you might not know that he actually is an author now. Uh, yeah. He also just released a book. When did that come out, 2010? Uh, the book came out in November. Um, I, I actually staggered the releases a little bit. Uh, what I did was I released um, a, a soft copy, a soft uh, cover, sorry, yeah. along with a download version. Then later I released a hardback a month later, and then I released on Kindle and Nook in January. Excellent. So it was kind of staggered. The full uh, spectrum. Okay. There's a strategy in there. It, I don't no, know. there was wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it was trying to. Uh, to basically write all of this sort of sort of infrastructure myself in, in the distribution model. Oh, so okay. what I had to do is to take the text that I had created mm -hmm. and then I had to turn around and make that in a format that Kindle could consume and Nook could consume yeah. and other e-readers could consume. Uh, so, so I got to flex my HTML. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, you, you put a lot of yourself into the whole production of yes. putting it out and everything. You should have gone with that, by the way, the edited by Notepad suggestion. I thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of your book, actually, um, you've been with Microsoft for about 15 years. Yes. And the book is a pretty big focus, pretty much focused on your time here. Yes. If I'm, you know. Speaking honestly about it, um, we've got what you would say maybe a collection of stories about some of the experiences you've had that stood out to you most. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of uh, a curious thing I want to ask you about. You are definitely not at the end of your career. You're very right. much in the midpoint. So <laughs> it seems like an odd time for someone to write a book about their career. Uh, but that's an interesting way to put it. Uh, uh, that, that indicates I might be a 30-year employee, which would be a pretty proud accomplishment. Yeah. Um, I, I think in my case, it was, uh, as, I, as I kind of detail in the book, um, it was sort of an accidental thing that I even came sort of to be at Microsoft. Mm -hmm. uh, I had left college and because I just ran out of money and it kind of wasn't working out for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Microsoft had an opportunity for contract employees at the time. Mm -hmm. I turned that into you know a, a full-time position later on. I got hired and the rest is just sort of that 15 years of mm -hmm kind of being a geek and being just a, a general nerd, but yeah. here working at what I think is probably one of the, the most amazing and sometimes even contentious yeah. uh, topics, you know, when you, you talk about uh, computers, Absolutely. Microsoft comes up, people have an opinion. Mm -hmm. I thought it'd be interesting to tell those stories and it just seemed like the right time. 15 years just seemed like a good, That's we'll a good pause here, stone. take a look back. Well, I still remember it, it's still fresh. But I might have another book coming up. Well, I was going to yes. say, yeah, that the, the, with with the kind of line of work that you're in, mm -hmm. which of course is a, a very hot point in the community, seeing as we're having so much more online interactions and everything right. like that, there needs to be something governing that. You're definitely going to be having a lot more stories as time goes oh, on. Oh, well. I, I didn't so, put them all in the book. <laughs> no, of course not. And I'm sure that you're going to be making more regularly as every, everything goes on. Yeah, my my uh, my plan is to to have a couple more. Uh, in fact, next month I'll probably begin working on the second one. All right. uh, the, the story of sort of how it came about was not just the looking back on the 15 years, but one day, right around the time I was celebrating my 15th year anniversary mm -hmm. uh, with the company, uh, I moved my blog uh, over to a, a different platform. And when I did, I noticed in the database export of all the things that I've written over the past, eight or nine years that I've had my blog ended up being several hundred thousand words. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, I bet there's a book in there somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and so that sort of was, was where a lot of the content came from. Well, yeah. What kind of a percentage, just a rough guesstimate, do you think did you take pretty much directly from your old posts and then put it into book form and then... I mean, um, it was pretty significant. So the first poll that I did out of the, the blog, so to speak, was about 35,000 words. Okay. Um, and that was what I felt had a for lack of a better way to put it, a loose narrative. Mm -hmm. Something that had sort of a beginning and then an, an, an end. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then from there, I actually worked with an editor, mm -hmm. a professional editor, to sort of both rewrite the content to make it less like a blog and more like a book yeah. or a series of individual stories, yeah. so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, as well as to, to, to polish it up. In, in that process, we dropped stories, we added stories, mm -hmm. okay. we changed things that we felt that maybe these two stories should be combined together. I think the story of the Windows 95 launch, yes. it's a great example of two <laughs> stories that were totally separate. One mm -hmm. was, 
you know, the day we finished the testing and mm -hmm. the other was the day it actually released. And so we thought that narrative actually worked much better as one story. It's so like a story example. arc kind of thing, yeah. <laughs> So, so I, mean, I would say, gosh, it's not it's not a huge percentage. There's still a lot more that I, like I said, I'm going to be working on my next one yeah, pretty soon. Uh, but uh, but we felt that the Microsoft stuff was mm -hmm. was probably the most topical. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, uh, one of the things that actually kind of surprised me about uh, reading the book is the story that you told about your time in security, because it very much seems as though that you had a lot of personal spin that you guys could put on what you did. Like you mentioned talking about the bulletins when you would have the weekly updates for, for people. Yes. And you would have Yo Pumpkinhead playing in the background. Yes. <laughs> which of course I had to play as I'm reading through the rest of the chapter. <laughs> and it will stick in your head, go look it up. Yeah. Um, it's from um, Cowboy Bebop. Cowboy Bebop, yeah. yeah, yeah. I love the seatbelts, I love the seatbelts. Yes. So it's kind of interesting to see, I mean, did you guys have that flexibility in that group as well? Yes, we did. Um, I mean, the, the, the idea of uh, spin, for lack of a better word. The thing about security was sort of great. Uh, with the level of transparency that the company had made, just sort of a philosophical decision to, to strive for when we talked to customers about security problems, mm -hmm. you couldn't spin it. Yeah. You know, the, when I began talking to the press about security incidents, I would mm -hmm. be asked, you know, well, what's the, what's the most an attacker could do? Yeah. Anything, yeah, pretty much. And take over your computer, and who's affected? All of it. Your imagination. You know, so, so it, it was a matter of, of getting that word out, both to warn customers that they needed to apply updates, but at the same time committing to a level of transparency that um, was clear to people that we were taking it seriously. We didn't treat it as a PR problem, and we worked with a great group of people in the Microsoft Security Response Center, and and that was sort of the I wanted to show as well, sort of that although we took it seriously, although it was very important to us to protect our customers from security threats. At the end of the day, you know, we're still a group of individuals who like to have fun together, yeah. and that was sort of the human side of pushing the bulletins out. Was the, the release music rolling down the hallway every yeah. every Wednesday morning when we used to release the bulletins? You got to make it fun too for yourselves. At, at some point, you have to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you make your own fun if it isn't there anyhow. That's true. Well, you guys had the busier schedules, kind of infrequently, like when the Blaster Virus and the Sasser Virus yes. came out. Are there any big pushes you guys have like that in live? Because I, I, I'm not. Oh, absolutely. They're not, they're not related, of course, to security threats that impact the entire internet. But those types of situations where we are constantly striving to either improve the service or or maybe something has, you know, maybe gosh, a, a, an EA server, or an ESPN server, or a Netflix server is having an issue and we're trying to, to make sure that, that those services are available as well. Um, they're not as, as, as impacting, of course, as the security issues. But yeah, there are times when we're running around trying to make sure everything's, oh, everything's running well, great. So what's the like, broadening got, your area too. I know I've got two weeks where I'm gonna be Roll away bed and fridge in the office again. <laughs> I would say anytime you're coming up against something that uh, we've created that, that even we don't fully understand the full breadth of how transformative it is, yeah. connect. Great example. Yeah, and that and that was that was where we we knew it was going to be months and months of yeah. work on mm -hmm. Uh, on just trying to make sure that that was a really great experience for customers that first day when they were able to hook up a Kinect device and, okay. and, and be able to use it for the first time. You know, every time we put someone in front of a Kinect who had never, didn't even know we were working on it and yeah. we were testing with customers, as soon as they began using it, <laughs> you could just see, oh, God, I mean, they would creepy. like light up, man. <laughs> no, it was yeah. like, I mean, a lot of us who are geeks would start to use it and go, this is, I want Minority Report right now, yeah. Yeah. this is it. But families and parents and spouses who aren't quite as used to the technology, mm -hmm. they just lit up like, now, now I can use this box that my yeah. kid uses with the 28 An buttons on the controller. An amazing accessibility that just, they've never seen it yet. Yeah. Like, what he can do now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was really, so that's an example of something where, okay. yeah, we look at plans like that and we say, yeah, we're gonna be busy. Yeah. So I'm curious uh, to know if you guys have any of those, like, wait a minute. People are using it for that. Hmm. Sure. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, uh, anytime that you happens create, with any kind of technology. Anytime though. you create technology, <laughs> but there's both the great there's, learning on the internet, or is it? There's <laughs> there's two things to that that are very important. The first is what happens far more often, and that's they're using it for that. That's amazing, you know, right? It's it's the actual taking the technology and putting it out in ways that we never expected, but we knew we were within the realm of possibility just yeah. by humans taking great technology and doing something amazing with it. Rarely, but unfortunately, it does become a, they're using it for that, we're gonna have to stop that. <laughs> so that's part of why my team kind of does <laughs> Circle back around, you uh, 
are going to be out of town again for another one of the larger conferences. Two, yes. actually. You Penny Arcade. Well, there's Arcade. Comic-Con yeah, here in Seattle this weekend. I'm really looking forward Emerald to seeing Emerald City this weekend. Uh, a lot of my friends are going to be in town. Um, uh, you know, uh, the actor and author, Will Wheaton, uh, okay. yeah. is going to be Looking forward to seeing Will. He's going to be on Friday and Saturday. Felicia Day from the Guild of course. Uh, is going to be here as well. Uh, there's just so many people uh, that I could just like sort of rattle off. They're going to be there. So oh, I'm really absolutely. looking forward to seeing all my friends this weekend. And then, uh, yeah, then we basically kind of redo it all again in Boston. Yeah. The next Pax weekend at Penny Arcade East. Yeah. So, Are you going to be doing the speaking more yes. or the book signing? No, no. I, I'm actually, um, I'm not, I, it's, it's mainly a matter of not wanting to lug it all around uh, mm. at, at this short <laughs> right? So I did not book any what they call merchandise areas for uh, the Comic-Con or for PAX East. I just okay. came off of uh, a cruise with uh, wow. Jonathan the Colton Joko yeah, the Joko and John Hodgman cruise crazy. and Will yeah. was there and we were all performing together and yeah. I was doing readings from the book there. Oh, awesome. So we just came yeah. off sort of a promotion thing there and I thought I'd take a little break. Yeah. Uh, so you've done the book the book tour already almost. Sort of, yes. Yeah, the book I did, cruise. I did the, the book better. cruise. Better That's cruise. way better. I also, I also had an opportunity to read from the book at uh, Woodstock, which yeah. is sort of our, our geek vaudeville show that yeah. we had. It's Adam, Adam Savage, Savage and of course. Yeah. Uh, and, and so the, I got the chance to do that. So coming into March, I like I knew I was going to be busy, and I wanted to have some fun. So I think I kind of yeah. said, oh, for the, for the book, we'll, we'll, I mean, I'll certainly mention it. And it is available on Kindle and Nook, which I think I, I dramatically underestimated demand mm -hmm. for Kindle and Nook was I decided to also provide personalized hardbacks. Hmm. So on my site, I basically said, right. you, you buy the hardback via PayPal, yeah. you, you send me who you want it made out to, mm -hmm. and what is your favorite thing? Are your hands tired? Uh, man, <laughs> I've sold 343 of those in the space wow. of 30 days. Oh man. And I had to stop because it was just, <laughs> it was, you have to be funny for 343 times in a row. Yeah. I, I, That's a lot of pressure. I wrote a story on the inside page wow. with whatever they gave me about like one guy said his favorite thing was uh, dinosaurs and so I had written this whole All thing right. about hey I love dinosaurs too I have a I have a cloned uh, pet Deinonychus that oh wait a minute looks like it's gotten out and then I I drew claw marks and blood splatters all over the page. Perfect. I went several pages in. Nope, nope, it's cool. I put it back in the cage. Everything's fine. Thank you. Bye bye. And then I just signed it. So doing that for each of the hardbacks was number one, tons of fun. Yeah. And it was a real great way to sort of connect with the readers as well. Who After you breached that three hundred mark, but yeah, I was, wow. I was hand cramping. Yeah, yeah I, I bet. Much. So those are done. That was a limited edition. Those run. are done. It was a limited edition. Those are gone, run. folks. Now they're so out there. I, I, you I can buy the hardback. Do it. If you see me, uh, the hardbacks are available now just by themselves. Okay. okay. So. Uh, if you see me at uh, an event and you would like me to do that for you at the event, I will do that, absolutely. But yes, they are not for sale anymore. Yeah, I, I imagine. Yeah. So the book was 2010, and I want yes. to follow up on one last thing you mentioned with the device of choice, since we're talking about devices a second ago. Your Nintendo DS was number one in terms of your time spent on. That's true. Is that still the number one? That is not still the number one. What's number one? Uh, it's, it's a pretty clear jump over to my, uh, I'll, I'll call it iOS, so iPhone slash iPad. Really? Uh, I, I have, so being a fairly mobile person and a fairly connected person, I've only just gotten my Windows Phone 7. Uh, they, 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 uh, they had one for all of the employees as yeah. we announced, but I hadn't gotten a chance to actually get mine, so I only just now have it. So I imagine it'll move because you can earn achievements. Yeah, uh, I've been hearing about that. I've been hearing about that. And a number of interesting games and titles yeah. that they're putting out on that too. Yeah, we're throwing just tons of games out, so it'll be awesome. But for right now, I'd say, yeah, my DS is actually uh, you know, toward I, I wrote most of the book towards the first half of 2010, but most of 2010 was spent on my iPhone yeah. um, and on my uh, my iPad. Now, are you going to be taking your DS with you to Emerald City and all of that? Wow. You won't. I won't. You won't. I actually. Won't. So you're not wow. going to be drawing inappropriate pictures with Will or anything like that on the <laughs> yeah. Picto yeah. Chat? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that'll happen anyways. <laughs> we'll do it in the iPad. All right, fair enough. All right, well, that's uh, Mr. Stephen Flus, Steptoe, as you know him. Uh, he'll be at ECC yes. and Pax East Coast if you're in Boston for that. And I'm sure he'll be around many places coming yes, up. Yes, he's present on the internet. Yes, uh, <laughs> yes I am. That's the best place to reach him, on the internet. Right there. Well, thank you for talking with us. No and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again. All right, thanks.